Okay, what's up guys? So I have a video showing you how to use the MetaTrader 4 mobile app on your iPhone. Now I'll be showing you how to use it on your Android device and in a little bit more in detail. So first of all, when you open your MetaTrader 4 app on the Android device, you're going to want to hit your even I get confused sometimes because I trade on iPhone and Android and it is different you want to hit that tab up at the top and then once it opens up this menu you're gonna hit manage accounts and this is where you'll be able to add your live and demo accounts just by pressing that addition button and you're going to select log into an existing account you'll choose your broker type in their name it'll pull up live and demo server for your broker Oops. can't be dropping a note eight like that tighten up <laughs> so if i type in lmfx it'll pull up the live and the demo server if i type in we don't do traders way so i'm not typing that in if I trade in Jive Effects, it'll bring up real and demo. So if you have a demo account, you're going to select demo. If you have a live account, you're going to select live. So coming back to the settings tab, I won't be using these buttons because you'll see these at the bottom of the screen. But I will come in here to hit settings and do my chart customization. So you want to look into what these options mean, whether you want to use them or not. I usually check everything. Yeah, even data window. And then what you want to do is come into colors and customize the chart so it looks how you want it to look. So if you want your background black, if you want your up bars green, your down bars red, you would come in here and customize this color chart to your liking until your chart looks something like that. Now, all the way to the left here, you have your quotes tab, which is going to bring you to where the currencies are. You'll see the ask and sell price. Uh, if you did, you're interested in trading a pair that's not listed here, you'll just hit the plus button. If you have LMFX like me, it'll say 4X miners up here at the top. And that's where the rest of your pairs are. If you want to add one of these, you just select it and it gets added to the list. You'll scroll down to the bottom to find it. And you can even customize the order there and by hitting the pencil button and you can drag these up and down to where you want them to be now your chart option it's going to show you hopefully you're looking at candlesticks like me you'll be able to select a time frame here so you can look at the chart in different time frames h1 simply means each candlestick represents 60 minutes or one hour if you come over here to the 30 minute chart now every bar represents 30 minutes so it's going to look a little bit different by analyzing different time frames you're able to trade with different objectives like long-term trades short-term trades a scalper is what you consider a short-term trader and they're going to be trading on the lower time frames where swing traders or long-term traders who might look to trade over a month's frame or a couple weeks or so, they're going to be trading up here on the higher time frames. So come to the trade screen. This is how you will place a trade. You can either select new order from the pair or you can come over here and add a new order and just simply select the pair that you want to trade by hitting the money sign boom let's say i want to do usd jpy for instance now you'll see when you hit this button up here you're going to have different you're going to have five different options to place your order market execution is going to go through immediately buy limit say you expect the price to reverse limit orders always change directions so on a buy limit order you're looking for the price to come down to a certain point 
your entry your entry point would be below the current price so let's say you set your entry point at 110.50 once it hit 110.50 it's going to execute the buy start going in the opposite direction like you predicted it to sell limit the exact opposite you'll set your entry point up here below the price above the price once it hits one 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 ten five three if that's your entry point is going to execute a sell and you'll start going down in the opposite direction now your stop orders continue in the same direction so let's say i'm waiting for the price to hit 110.52 up here and then keep going i do a buy stop hit my entry point up here and then as soon as it hits 110.525 i'm in a buy executed it. it's going up same thing for sell stop i place my entry point down here 110.520 once it hits that it's going to execute a sell hopefully keep going down for the profit now for Example purposes, I'm going to use a market execution order. I'm not going to place this because I haven't done any research. I haven't checked the charts to see uh, what is a good entry or if this is a good buy or sell. But the first thing I'm going to do is select my lot size. And you do that by your stop loss and your risk management skills. So let's say I have $100 in my account right now. I want to risk 5% of my account. So I'm only going to risk $5 at any point in time. 0.01 you see here is basically $0.10 cents per pip. So I know if I set this at 0.01 and I can risk $5, I can do 10 of these trades at 10 pips each on the stop loss. That's going to be a dollar per trade and a total of $5 risk. Your stop loss is this red line right here. So whatever you put here on this red line, if the price reaches that, it's going to close out. And you're going to either take whatever profit you have at that point in time, or you're going to take whatever you lose at that point in time. So what you will want to do with this, right now the price is at 110.521. If I want to set my stop loss at 10 pips, like I said, with the 10 cents per pip lot size, where I will lose a dollar on this trade, worst case scenario. I'm going to set my stop loss at 110.42 if it's a buy, because 110.42 is 10 pips below the current price. Now, this is a JPY pair, so the pip is considered the first and second number after the decimal, which is why I said 0.42. So if I move this down, use my other hand so you can see it this is going down by pip x every time i hit that down button now we down to 48 now we down to 47 pips now we down to 46 pips all the way down to 110 42 oh i went too far oh no i didn't i'm at 43 all the way down to 110.42. 4 to be exact, as you can see there. This would be exactly 10 pips below the current price, which would be a 10 pip stop loss. So with a 0.01 worst case scenario, I'm losing a dollar on this trade. A 0.1 is a dollar per pip. So worst case scenario now, I'm losing ten dollars on this trade if i go down to a 0.05 that's 50 cents per pip now worst case scenario i'm losing five dollars on this trade and so on and so forth now if i was bold enough to trade a 1.0 which is ten dollars per pip now i'm risking a hundred dollars on this same trade but all I have to do is gain 10 pips and I'm $100 in profit. When you're trading all the way down here at 0.01 like you will as a beginner, 10 pips is only going to be a dollar, which is not very exciting for profit. But at the same time, you can only lose a dollar. This is how you properly manage your risk. Stop blowing your account 
and lose into much money. Figure out what 5% is or a good risk percentage. Only risk that at any point in time. So now I'm going to show you the green line, which is your take profit. If I have my stop loss set for 10 pips, I need my take profit set for at least 20. Now this is called a 2.0 gain loss ratio. I'm aiming to gain twice the amount of pips I expect to lose. So if I was to set that at 15 on the stop loss, I'm setting the take profit for 30 pips. But right now it's set at 10. So just like before, now I'm going to press the up sign. I'm going to go all the way to 110.64 because you see the sell price over there is 110.54. That's what's called the spread. What's in between goes to the broker. So let me bump this up to 6.4. And now we're looking at a... 10 pip stop 10 pip take profit so on this trade I would make a dollar on this trade I'm making ten dollars on this trade I'm making a hundred dollars so it's just basic math how much am I gonna lose how much am I gonna make is what I'm aiming to make twice what I would possibly lose you do that five to ten times a day even if you lose on more trades than you win you will still profit all you need is a good couple trades at a proper stop at a proper take profit and you're good to go now I'm gonna shoot another video later on on how to trail your stop loss which basically just means if I risk $5 on a trade and I can only risk $5 at a time, what I'm going to do if I make a max trade, which would be a $5 risk, or if I open up five trades, for instance, and risk $1 each, so now I got five total. With those five open positions, I'm not going to open any other trades until those positions are closed, or at least one of those are closed, which would free up a dollar or I've created a risk-free open trade by moving the stop loss above the current entry point. So what that does is say I open a, a position and I go in profit an hour later, what I'm gonna do after I'm in profit is change my stop loss from a worst case scenario $1 loss and move it up where I may lock in half of the profit I was going for. So let's say I'm 50 cents in profit or I'm a dollar in profit, but I was expecting to hit $2. I'ma lock that dollar in with my stop loss and now I have a risk-free trade because there's no way I can lose money on that trade. I would just make less than my take profit. So once you do that, you can go open up more positions. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it answers any questions you may have had. If you still have questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. And make sure you subscribe to my channel because I create training like this all the time. It's easy to me. It's fun to me. I love making money and I love math. So I'm a Forex guy. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this.